Welcome to Foxfire Farmhouse, the podcast. The podcast of podcasts. The best podcast. The podcast. The only podcast. The only podcast. The only podcast worth catching. That's us. Here yeah. at Foxfire Farmhouse, the podcast about all things storytelling and digital media. Mm-hmm. We are here to talk about just that today. Storytelling with digital media. Mm-hmm. And some people who did it well or bad. Mm. That's what we're going mm, to talk about. Yes. We finally disagree. <laughs> wow. uh, I'm both this excited is, and infuriated at the same this time. This is where the band splits up. <laughs> no. Batman yeah. is our Yoko Ono. It took, us, it took us all the way to this episode. Yeah. And now, finally. I would have thought that this would have been... That's why it's so crazy. It's like yeah, we'll we'll we'll, we'll, talk, we'll talk about we'll it. We'll talk figure about it. out. We'll figure <sighs> out what uh, why we're so split here on this one. I was talking about it on on Sunday with Abby, and she's just like, "Okay, I'm done That's hearing <laughs> about Josh's opinions on Batman." I was like. <laughs> But I just don't understand uh, it. I don't. I don't. Under- that's, <laughs> so, yeah, that's pretty much all, all of uh, all of us and yeah. our wives' mm-hmm. frustration. So, yeah. but before we get on to our wife's frustration, mm-hmm. uh, how about we talk about movie news? There's a little movie yeah. that uh, came out last Recently, week yeah. called The Batman. <clears throat> And that is going to be the topic of today's show, but it is also going to be uh, movie news because it's got some interesting, uh, just some interesting stuff going yeah. on around it. So indeed, yeah, because it's uh, it's one of the first big movies. Well, you know, not the first, but one of the, one of the bigger movies to come mm-hmm. out uh, post COVID, oh, and yeah. so it's generating a lot more buzz, getting a lot more uh, conversation, and uh, a lot more money too than most indeed. other movies. Indeed, so. It's pretty interesting to see another movie come out, and yeah. uh, it's it, it's uh, you were saying how how tickets for Batman are more than yeah. other tickets at the theater. Yeah, so they 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 just uh, began like a price hike. Like you can go to AMC and see that uh, the prices are a bit more expensive to see Batman than to go see whatever other movies out. It's not like other movies are playing, but other movies yeah, are, right. are are less expensive, and so I think we're seeing the slow and gradual increase of uh, prices at the cinema. Yeah, which is pretty uh, to be expected. Mm-hmm. And I don't think it's egregious how much more it is, but it is it was it was like a buck, a couple bucks yeah. more. But it's it's just different. You don't usually pay more for typically in the past you buy your movie. ticket and that's yeah. just what you buy. Yeah. And you're paying for the theater you're going to see it in. So mm-hmm. it's is it a really nice theater? Are you in their premier lounge where you have access to drinks and food and stuff? What's the what's the uh what's the experience you're paying for, not what is the movie that you're paying for? You're paying for. for brilliance is what you're paying for. <laughs> <laughs> Depending on which movie you watch. <laughs> <laughs> So it's also the it's Batman got I think what you're seeing. Yeah, it's got a hundred and thirty four uh, million in box office revenues for the yeah. opening weekend, which is a really solid weekend. Pretty great uh, post COVID. Uh, mm-hmm. I mean, it's a good weekend anytime, but yeah. uh, particularly post COVID when we've got so much uh, for sure not going well. And a movie that's been like on the radar for a while, like it's been supposed to have come out for years because right. it was like already in the works. And I don't know. I think there's a trailer like the first year of COVID. Of the Batman, like little That's true. It's images out. that they're yeah. putting out, but uh, and even before that, it was went through production weirdness with Ben Affleck and different directors, and right like, morphed into this, which is yep. pretty pretty phenomenal that it turned into this from being through so many hands. Yeah, so. you would expect you would expect the uh, change to actually change it a lot and make yeah. it something worse, which is typically how things happen. But typically, it uh, it's very. Well, within imagination, that this is far better than what would have come out of the mm-hmm. follow up to something like Justice League or yeah. that kind of thing. So, indeed, yep. indeed. Well, so that's that's our movie news. Movie Not news. much, but it's there. Mm-hmm. Cool things. Every week here on the podcast, we talk about things that are cool. So, what have you been finding that has been cool this week? Uh, related to the Batman. Um, I was just, I, was, I know, I know it's so good. <laughs> it's so good. If you say the Batman, um, I'm going to stab you in the eye with this pen. Uh, things that are cool. The Batman for one, <laughs> uh, everyone should go see it. It's the greatest thing ever made. Um, I'm not that far gone. I'm, I don't think it's the greatest thing ever made, but it's amazing. Um, but, uh, if you want more Batman, uh, particularly in the video game format, um, I would recommend that you go Ooh. check out the Arkham games. Yes. Um, all three of them are great. Um, you, I think 
if you were to skip one, you could go straight to Arkham City. Arkham Asylum is pretty fun, but it's and it's more in the vein of kind of what you just saw. Or I guess Arkham Knight is probably more closer to what you just saw in the Batman, but they're just fun games, great combat. They changed basically video Which game Which one was combat. the newest one? Night. So Night? it goes okay. Asylum, City, and then Night. So I think I've, I've I think I've actually not played City. I think I've, I I've finished Night. Yeah. And then I've played what was the first one? Asylum. Uh, Asylum. I've yeah. played the first one. I don't think I've quite finished that one. But so I played those two. <laughs> yeah, uh, they're yeah. they're all good. I think for me, like I, the first one I played was City, and I loved Arkham City. Like I played that through a couple times. It's just it just opens up like so many different Batman villains. You get to go through so much Batman lore. They throw everybody at you. Like you get locked up in like the story is that you get locked up inside of uh, Arkham Asylum was too small to hold all the villains and the villains had taken it over. And so they decided to make a huge section of Gotham into a city that they could just let the criminals run free in. And so that's what happens Hmm. as they create the city and then some messed up stuff happens with particularly the Joker. Nice. And it creates this war inside the city that you have to go put your hands into as Batman and kick butt. Sweet. But just solid game. Great music. Yeah. Great vocal performances. You have Mark Hamill as the Joker. Oh, One yeah. of the best Jokers of yeah. all time. Him and Heath Ledger. And then Joaquin Phoenix is up there, too. Don't mention Jared Leto. He's just tor- <laughs> terrible. <laughs> um, but anyway, it's it's just... They're good games. Yeah. Check them out. I They're loved cool. the I, the action, and that was so satisfying. Like yeah. the the finishes. <laughs> well, every so good. Every game since then is just a spin off of the Arkham system, mainly. Like all That's of like true. Ghost of Tsushima, uh, the Shadow of Mortar games. And it just it did feel creates very, a solid it, combat. It did feel very uh, original. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. They kind of pioneered it. It's yeah, pretty cool. That's cool. Awesome. So right. this week. I, last week mm-hmm. I played my first ever Dungeons and Dragons round and it was a lot of fun. So Boom. I have to say going into it yes. that there is that I, I was nervous <laughs> about, I guess, two things. Number one, yeah. am I going to like the game mm-hmm. at all? Right. Like is the mechanic going to be fine? Cause, cause yeah. so I don't love board games. Yeah. I'm not like a gamer mm-hmm. when it comes to board games. There are people we have pl- tons of people in our little orbit of friends yeah. right now that are pretty intense gamers you know they've got a lot of games and they're yeah, they have like house, rooms dedicated you know. yeah so you, so we've got some hardcore gamers and i just haven't got into that mm-hmm. and then so that's one one thing i was nervous about and then the other part is just the role playing like what is the whole experience like yeah you, you know just the, the kind of i had a certain connotation that came along with it of like what it was going to be. And mm-hmm. I just wanted to see what it actually was. And so yeah, you invited me and I'm like, I've got to check it out. Yeah. It sounds fun. It could be a total nightmare, yeah. but I ended up, I really enjoyed it a lot. And Good. so enjoyed it enough <laughs> that I went and got the player's handbook, bought myself some dice, not just one set, but four. Yes. <laughs> I think I, I think it actually came with five. Oh, so snap. It, was just, Even it was just whatever came with the, with the kit, the set that I bought on Sweet. Amazon. So yeah, so I've got, yeah. you know, a set we're going to play again soon and I'm, I'm, yeah, so I'm down with the Dungeons and Dragons excited to kind of get my feet wet. I think something that, so I've been trying to understand why mm-hmm. I like it and yeah. coming off of one game, that's probably not going to be answered very quickly. But one of the things I really like about it is that it's the kind of game that if I learn the mechanics mm-hmm. and I learn the characters and kind of how the, the traits of different people, mm-hmm. that it's the kind of game you can keep playing for a lifetime and it, it is. is always new. Mm-hmm. It's never the same game. It's always fun. It's always a new story. And it's not, you know, just the new drama of the conflict between you and other people. Like if you're playing risk or yeah. a traditional style board game. So yeah, yeah. I really like that. I just ruined board games for you forever. Yeah, probably. Cause you're never going to play a game. That's, <laughs> that's like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah. But it's fun. I'm yeah. glad you can play and you kick butt. Yeah, it was awesome. It was fun. Mm-hmm. And now our feature presentation. The time has are. come. <laughs> uh, we stand, we sit across the table from one another, mm-hmm. both viewing the same thing, the Batman, and both seeing it from two different perspectives. Yes. Yes, indeed. So so let me just, I got a text from Elijah saying he just saw Batman. Yeah. And he was thrilled and stoked. So thrilled. And I was so stoked. I I'm saw like, the first showing you could possibly <laughs> see, 3.30. He was dedicated on Thursday, which was the day before opening day. Yeah. So, so like the early, early show. And then I the saw it the next day at 
twice. Man, this guy. I have nothing else to do. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm a dad. I have better <laughs> things to do, but I wouldn't sub that man. <laughs> again and again and again and again. <laughs> yeah. So I went to see Batman then. Mm-hmm. Super stoked about it. Yeah. And I walked out of the theater like, wait a second. What was that? Uh, And just lost, confused, thinking that this wasn't much of a, as much of a movie as I wished it had. Oh goodness. So we're going to talk about the Batman today. Okay. And, uh, sorry folks, you got to sit in on our little argument about whether or not the Batman was actually good. Yep. So obviously it's going to help if you've seen the Batman. You should go see it. And you should, it, I will say from the get go, it's a movie worth watching. Mm-hmm. It's not when I say it that I don't particularly like it. Mm-hmm. It's not that I don't like it of, uh, of like, gosh, no one should go see that film. That's not at all. Mm-hmm. You should go see it. So if you yeah. haven't seen it, don't let us ruin it for you. Go watch yep. it. Uh, it has generated a lot of conversation, which mm-hmm. means it's probably a good movie. Mm hmm. Got people talking after the, I've done a lot of talking about Batman since I watched that movie, which isn't what happens after every movie. Yeah. Typically the movie is just like, Oh, that was so cool. Man, that was great. And then we go on or yeah, that was bad or meh. And then we're it. That's it. But this movie actually has got me talking. So in that sense, it's good, but, but, uh, maybe walk, you're the one who loves the movie. So we'll, let's let you explain what the movie is. All right. And uh, set people up who made it what's going on and uh, where does this fit into? Does this fit into the rest of the Batman universe? Yeah. And what, what are we, what are we looking at? I'll break it down for you. Nice. Three, two, one. Boom. So Boom. where it kind of fits in the whole thing um, uh, in terms of the Batman mythos is it's its own, it's its own universe. So it's not connected to any previous Batman that you've okay. seen, not connected to Nolan. Um, he's Bruce Wayne. There's an Alfred and they're all their own characters. So you don't need to watch anything prior to, watching Batman. Although we'll talk about it and there's some things that have to deal with that. Um, uh, it's year two of Batman. So it's not like Batman begins is kind of like year one where, so that is referring to some kind of comic book connection, um, right? Isn't there, isn't there some uh, book called year one or two or something like that? There is is a Batman. Is that what you mean? Or are you just meaning like, cause in the movie he says, this is like my, it's been both. doing this for two years, you know, something like that. Yeah, it's it's both. And so Batman Year One is what heavily influenced uh, the first Batman Begins movie. Okay. Um, in terms of the arcs and the beats that it hit. Okay. Um, because it's kind of like the first one to really flush out the beginning of Batman, that that comic book. And so this one kind of goes, well, we've done the the pearls falling in the alley, the parents getting shot an insane amount of times. I think it's like eight times cinematically, including (laughs) some movie cartoons. Yeah. And so they're like, we're not going to do that again. We're going to go Batman year two. He's been established. He's beat some villains. He's learned some lessons. Um, but he's not like to the point of like dark Knight Batman, which is kind of Batman at his best. Like he's in his prime. He's beating Mm -hmm. pretty much all of the villains at that point. Um, this Batman, he's beat a couple of villains, debatable, which ones, um, I don't know if we want to break into spoilers yet. Do you want to break? Into yeah, spoilers? yeah, this is going to be full of spoilers, people. Spoiler discussion. Spoilerific. I think Alert. it's five stars. Uh, Josh thinks it's zero. <laughs> so we'll uh, we'll move forward from there. <laughs> <laughs> no, what 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 stars would you put it at? I I think I literally put it at two and a half. Oh. And, yeah. No. So the the goal of tonight <laughs> is for me to bring his five star yeah. down to like a four. And the goal of my of me is to bring his up to a five. (laughs) Okay. I will get him to 100% think this is the greatest film ever made. Kurosawa, move out of the way. (laughs) Matt Reeves is here. (laughs) Nolan. Get out of here, guys. Amateur. All right. Anyway, new dog in town. Not that good, Um, Uh, but it is amazing. So anyway, year two, uh, where was I at? Um, yeah, so he's been established. He's yeah, he's killed been established. some villains, or not killed them, but knocked off some yes, villains. He's got him. Yeah. <laughs> so Arkham is getting full. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's kind of where he's at. So yeah. then, so then this one is picking up there. Yeah, it's picking up there. People, people know who Batman is. Batman is accepted by the police at this point. And so he's like showing up, like it literally shows him walking onto a crime scene with uh, Detective Gordon uh, or Lieutenant Gordon at this point. And uh, he's working hand in hand with them and 
kind of being more of a detective and uh the, all the criminals like it opens up with like this whole boom 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 of like showing the criminals being afraid when the bat signal turns on mm-hmm. so it's it's scaring people um and so you get a bit of a grizzled batman at least like a a battle-worn batman at this point um so he's a bit smarter than he was and yeah so you get to see him face off in this movie against the riddler which i'm super excited to see not jim carrey as the riddler yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah and this one i think it just rides more closer on the edge to comic book than nolan okay and, uh, yeah. we can mm-hmm. discuss that the yeah. nolan versus reeves here in a little bit but uh yeah so i mean the movie just kind of opens up with with him uh with the riddler killing the mayor of the town and uh batman follows up on that and it just he pulls on a thread and it's connected to a lot of things that the riddler wants him to look at and to to see this corruption in the city and it is a wild ride yeah so so from here on out Mm -hmm. we should just kind of assume that people know the story yes okay Uh, so we can give you the introduction (laughs) yeah uh that's enough so so that yeah so he's following he's chasing the riddler Mm -hmm. he runs into catwoman yeah they end up working together because there was a murder of catwoman's friend that is kind of in the same orbit as the investigation batman's on Mm -hmm. so that's where she comes into it Mm -hmm. uh the penguin's also poking around in there the penguin's kind of hanging out at the in the wings kind of waiting to carmine falcones in there yeah he's there yeah Uh, uh let's see that so then so then there's kind yeah. of this back and forth between yeah. them uh throughout the whole movie ending up then in the end where he catches the riddler the uh riddler blows all the of city, gotham the seawall sea that surrounds gotham and floods the city mm-hmm. and batman uh helps rescue people yep. in the end and to kind of save the mayor mm. The disdain in your voice. So yeah, yeah. So <laughs> it just feels so it's so, so anticlimactic <laughs> to get to that point. Um, so so then so that's the uh, that's kind yeah. of the broad. Those things happen. Broad stroke. Yeah. So if you haven't seen the movie and you don't care about watching it Go or don't care it. about spoilers and you just want to like hear the conversation, mm-hmm. then that's the movie. Yeah. So in then in a nutshell. Yeah. So then, is there anything else we should um, mention I don't think as far as what the movie is actually about? Before um, we no i think i think uh, so, so then, one of the things so that we what, can oh sorry yeah so i'd say let's start then yeah. with describing what like what about this movie is different and and what did he what 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 have they added to yeah. the batman or or wh- why, why do you like why do you batman, like it yeah yeah. yeah 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 so i think uh what i what i appreciate about it and what i appreciate about it, like all the batman movies is a good villain uh, i think this one achieved a very good villain um a very smart villain and the riddler was a great choice the go-to choice for everyone is the joker so i was glad i was yeah, glad it was nice that there to see restraint. A di- it was definitely nice to see a different <laughs> villain on screen yeah and to see somebody else try to do another version of uh, heath ledger was was nice to not have that again oh. yeah right <laughs> uh but uh yeah so i think the strength of of the best batman movies which i think this ranks in them uh i'll just compare it to dark knight is uh the the villains so the, uh, mm-hmm. the villains and even the best batman comics what the villains are there for is to uh try to break break the bat so like in the dark knight rises he physically breaks the bat because he's physically a match to batman and even more than a match to batman um and so like every every villain and also bane is also just smarter in a way than batman and so he proves and beats him at all these points and same thing with the joker the joker proves and beats him on all these points and beats the system that Batman has helped to establish uh, in Gotham and corrupts all these people. And, but he, he couldn't corrupt Batman. And so that the same thing happens in this movie with the Riddler is that the Riddler pretty much like, and that's, that's where most people and the people that we've talked with their, their problem is, is that the Batman loses in this, like he loses pretty big mm-hmm. and the city gets completely wiped out. I don't know how many people, probably died in this yeah right. but a lot it, 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 yeah <laughs> batman loses very big at the yeah end, yeah um and so what the what the riddler proposes to batman is that he has a better intellect um so he shares some things in common he has intellect just like batman mm-hmm. um he has uh the uh, revenge arc in him like the the desire for revenge yeah and he uses fear just like batman and so 
he comes at Batman with all those all those things and in a way mirrors him and shows Batman kind of like I'm we're the same person like you're just as as dirty and evil as I am and I'm going to beat you at this game. So here's my little arena come play in my little arena of villainhood and I'm going to beat you. And so what the way that I think this movie is better is that Batman he gets beaten in the villain realm but he doesn't stay there. He goes into the the heroic realm in which he kind of wins and so the villains expect him to remain in this bubble because you're batman and so he transcends that and he goes into kind of more of a heroic arc so like the riddler kind of wanted him to to remain beaten Mm -hmm. but batman didn't remain beaten he obviously Mm -hmm. lost intellectually but he won through kind of heart like kind of what you're talking about with uh born on one of the previous episodes right yeah yeah where Mm -hmm. batman's greatest strength isn't the fact that like his intellect is greater than than the Riddler. It's because Batman actually cares about people. He cares about Gotham. He cares about what's going to happen to it. And so this whole movie is proving, and even proving to Batman, that he cared about Gotham and that there's things that he cared about still. And so that's kind of yeah. why, why I appreciated it. Because hmm. it showed... So uh, how did it show the change though? Because so then we get to the end, you know, it, like, yeah. like everything floods, mm-hmm. and then he's helping people on the roof of the arena. Yeah, like is that is that our change? Is that the hey everything's better in the world because he is now helping people? Like w- w- you yeah. know what I mean? Like so that arc, I would w- like I can see yeah. that as being something I would want it to have done. Yeah, since he does definitely lose, yeah. then. I would want there to be something he's learning from the loss or that Mm -hmm. the loss is the point, but that the loss doesn't actually seem in my mind to actually change anything in him. Uh, They might've wanted it to be, Mm -hmm. but they don't show that at all outside of him helping people on the top of the arena. And then, and then, you know, in the beginning, it's like, I think the city would have been better off without Batman, Mm -hmm. but they have not made any compelling reason by the end of it, that he actually needs to continue being Batman. Yeah, I think, I think, uh, so you, you see it through like all, obviously you see the arc through the parallel imagery and mm-hmm. all that stuff and the parallel lines, like the I am vengeance shows up so many times. Yeah. Right. And, exactly. Uh, you see Riddler beating up somebody just the same way that Batman is like, where they're like, oh, like mm-hmm. just, just enraged, just un unleashing their strength on somebody. Yeah. Um, but I think that they show that throughout the movie through, through Catwoman, through his relationship with Alfred. Uh, And so I think with that, I would say the Catwoman arc is a bit stronger in showing that in terms of the, the work he's putting into, into her to like, kind of uh, keep her from going down the slope of which he, he knows already of, of going, turning to violence, turning to killing somebody over, over this arc, becoming the enemy, becoming the villain. Uh, using the same means, like just proving that the ends do not justify the means. Mm-hmm. Um, and the, they tried the same thing with Alfred and trying to show his humanity when he's going, Alfred gets blown up and he, he realizes that he has fear for those who he cares about. And so that kind of, sh- it softens him in a way, uh, to the fact yeah, that. So, so I want, I, so I really do yeah. want to believe all that because like on, so in one sense, the very end where things change is there's the whole who are you and the the, one of the shooters says i am vengeance yeah and you know using batman's line but the problem is so he says that but but the the odd thing about that is is like where else did that show up did that show up anywhere else in the movie where anyone would know that batman had ever said that uh probably in because in the very beginning he says i am vengeance Mm -hmm. to a group of ruffians he's beating the tar out of i'm assuming that that they were relying on you seeing that they had a video camera going the whole time they had their phone they had their recording going because they were showing videos of them punching guys in the park and then they had their video up to to show that they were going to beat up the the guy getting off the train okay but they never show but they that. They never show that. Right. Like, so, so like, so, so, yeah. so I, I mean, even if thematically the guy mm-hmm. says, I am vengeance, he has no idea that Batman has said it. Mm-hmm. It's the, the whole impl- the, the implied thing is that Batman realizes Batman's that he thing said is that. Yeah. So Batman, yeah. it clicks in his head. Yeah. So then he realizes, Hey, I need to stop being vengeance yeah. or something. Something mm-hmm. is wrong here. Yeah. But then, and then he does the first up until now, he hasn't really at all cared about Catwoman. Yeah. Like 
it, the film goes to comic lengths to demonstrate how much he really doesn't care about her. Mm -hmm. And there's hints that maybe, and you want it to be, but it's not. And then there at the end, he, you know, uses the adrenaline shot or whatever to come back and mm -hmm. save her. So it's the first act, I think, of the whole movie where he's actually acting out of like real care for somebody. Yeah. And then immediately after that, he goes and saves people and falls into the water. Uh, and then, and someone pointed out to me that that's like, you got the repentance and then the baptism and then the change and, and, it, yeah. and, and it thematically it yeah, works. They I mean, do going, that all the time. And then the you've film. got, and then you've got flood, you know, flood imagery mm -hmm. of the destruction of the world yeah. at the end. And, yeah. and so like, I see those kinds of things. I just don't see them being developed in any meaningful way up until the end. And the, they just kind of hope and demand and trust that you're going to get it. But that the movie wasn't yeah. actually about those things. Like I, so I walked out of the movie wondering like, what is this thing? What is it trying to say about Batman? Because mm -hmm. he has totally failed. And I don't, I just don't see him actually change. Like what, like how do we see him move to the hero side? Right? Like we don't actually see that. It's more like a moral morality tale yeah. of look, everyone is corrupt mm -hmm. and the city was worth destruction yeah. and it got what it had coming yeah. so that it's almost like if there is a tale to this, it is one in which judgment comes for all, even the Batman. Mm -hmm. And there is no, I, I don't see any compelling reason at the end of the film for Batman to continue to be like, why do we still need Batman? Cause the element is still out there, right? They there's, say there's that still villains. But what I'm saying yeah. is that they say that, mm -hmm. but there's no reason for it in, in the, in the, in the movie universe other than, Hey, there's still a villain. There's still, you know, yeah. we still haven't looked at the Joker yet. We still haven't seen yeah. like uh, in, in the movie itself, what has like th they have been. So the, the Riddler to me, mm -hmm. number one seems like he is, he is saying to Batman, like you and I are just the same. We're yeah. both after the corrupt people in the yeah. in Gotham and that's everybody. So in one sense, mm -hmm. him and Batman are genuinely kind of, similar to one another, right? Mm -hmm. Like they're doing some of the same things. Yeah. And what is the, what is the difference between Batman and the Riddler? What, is, what do you think? Like, what is that? Uh, the difference. I don't know. <laughs> Cause I, cause I yeah. don't, cause I don't see it. Like Batman and the Riddler are both targeting corrupt people. That's the thing about the Batman that makes him, well, uh, I think Bat I, what makes it what, cause what makes Batman Batman at least now I'm not a comic book nerd. Yeah. So I only have the cinematics to go off of. Yeah. But like, what makes Batman Batman is that he takes on the corruption in Gotham. Mm -hmm. He's the one, the reason that the cops, the reason that you can't trust justice to be done by the cops, yeah. that he must do something is because he, because everyone else is corrupt and he yeah. is incorruptible. So he's good at crime fighting. He's mm -hmm. like a good detective. He can yeah. do, he can do the work mm -hmm. and he's, you know, uncorruptible. So that's why, and he doesn't want to do this forever. That's what happens mm -hmm. in the dark Knight, right? When you've got yeah. a Batman who is willing, not just to say, Hey, everything is corrupt. And so I'm just going to be yeah. justice. He actually wants to establish the system again to where the system works so that there's no, no more need for Batman, right? Like, yeah. so that he's not, it's not just a ego trip for Batman though. Mm -hmm. It descends into that sometimes yeah. it's a, it's a man, it's a moral obligation to step up basically to be the sheriff in town when there is no sheriff, right? Yeah. Like when the sheriff's gone corrupt, I'm going to step in and I might have to wear a black hat, but I'm going to be the guy who restores true justice, yeah. right? That seems to be Batman to me, at least my think, understanding of him. So yeah. that then when this film, when he, when then we have Batman show up, yeah. uh, he's very light. Like you're saying, he's just like the Riddler. There's yeah. all these comparisons that are being made yeah. between him and the Riddler. But then what we end up getting is, Hey, and look, everything, even his father was corrupt, right? Yeah. Like the corruption goes all the way yeah, it goes down everybody. and Batman is corrupt because he has, because one of the key things they're pointing out in the movie that's mm -hmm. interesting is that they, is that Bruce Wayne has just not been present. Like so yeah, there's no, not been any Bruce Wayne and everyone's trying to get Bruce Wayne's attention I know. so that he can pay to charity. So it mm -hmm. looks like even Bruce Wayne is corrupt in one yeah. sense that like he's implicit at least in yeah. the corruption because he's not being and present as Bruce Wayne. And that's partially why why the Riddler didn't end up taking him out is because he saw that he was Batman and he realized that he wasn't he wasn't corrupt. Like he was doing he's doing the same thing or a similar thing to him. I think the, yeah, the but big, then but then if if Batman is the thing that needs to stay, yeah. We still haven't established that Batman is different than the Riddler. 
Well, he's different than the Riddler because of the means. Like it's it's the means that he he goes goes to 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 do these things. Like he's not willing to go just like the Joker. The Joker like also destroyed organized crime in Gotham in a way that the cops never could. Right, but but one of the strengths I think about that movie mm-hmm. is that it gives Batman the choice. Are you going to kill the Joker? And he has the opportunity to do exactly what everyone else has been doing. Mm -hmm. And in that movie, he chooses not to kill the Joker, not to use the means. Right. Yeah. But what scene, what scene, I I just don't see or don't remember any point in this movie, I guess, where the Batman is given that dilemma Mm -hmm. for him to make the choice of to follow the means of the Riddler or not. You see what I'm saying? Like Other, other than through the, through Catwoman, I guess he's given, he's given like a, through like a proxy. In terms of oh, telling he's her telling not, to, go her not yeah. to do it, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. As as somebody who's gone through that before, so I I think that there there are several misgivings due to the fact that this is a year two story, and so there there is like and I like there are problems with it. I I do see that there's issues with it. I think the the chief thing that I I don't just necessarily like about it is the the whole Alfred second arc, uh, the second act uh, mm-hmm. with Alfred. And just his portrayal is that Alfred, you rely upon watching all these movies to care about Alfred. They don't establish why you should care that he almost blew up other than he's like kind of a charismatic actor and you've seen him in other things. And also you've seen Alfred in a bunch of things. So you know what he means to Batman because Mm -hmm. of those movies. But in this movie, Batman doesn't care about him other than screaming on a car ride and being like, oh, I'm scared. I'm scared. Uh, So that to me, like there, I do see that there's a lot of points of which which it's relying on you have relying on you knowing who Batman is and yeah. knowing like watching the Nolan films, watching all of the 89 films and like knowing who the Joker is and the fact that Batman would have, there's things that Batman would have already done. And so there's yeah. a lot of wiggle room in terms of like, right. Has Batman already gone through this before? Yeah. Especially since he's already beaten the Joker. Like has, has yeah. he had that dilemma in the past and it's just not even a thing. And also just for, Reeves sake like he doesn't want to do exactly the same thing that yeah right he's trying Nolan to did. He, he, he has to try to go into new territory somewhere mm-hmm. yeah. yeah but i i do see i don't i do i do recognize that there that the, the dilemma is a lot smaller in this one in terms of the fact that he doesn't receive that dilemma but it's the dilemma of of catwoman uh, yeah so then you've got your hero far. is not having to make any decisions you, you know at the end of yeah. it and, and even batman doesn't even do anything to to <laughs> batman does not even capture the riddler Right, like that's part of how much the Riddler beats him. Mm-hmm. The the Riddler turns himself in, and Batman would not have, at least at the mo- point in the movie, yeah. he did not would not have had him. But the but the Riddler turns himself in, and then explodes the city, and ba- that's how Batman you know falls yeah. apart and do, do, things don't work for him. <laughs> uh, so I, so I really want so I was really rooting for this movie. Yeah, number one, I like the Batman. Number yeah. two. The, the movie, I love the tone and the pace and the feel of it. Like yeah. the mood that is set yeah. is, is wonderful. And the imagery it's is dark and grimy, glorious, and... like so, so good in yeah. so many moments that are like these really interesting comic portrayals. book frames and yeah, really good. Yeah. It's and I just like, I want this thing to be good so bad. Production wise. I think it's like, like it's yeah. as good as you can get production wise. In terms of like the directing was wonderful because there are certain actors in that movie that I was like, ah, they're not good actors, but he pulled great performances out of them. He was able to create a movie that flowed really well. So I give it to Matt Reeves for mm-hmm. directing Absolutely. a good movie. I do see some pitfalls that are relying upon past knowledge yeah, right. to put things into the movie. I, yeah. But, and I think that one the other... Uh, one of the other things that's really good about it is that it, uh, it, it, it really tries to make, it, it really works to make, get the best it can out of every frame. Like yeah. it really does. And yeah. it's worth it. Like there, there are images that still hang in my head. A, a lot of times you watch a movie and you yeah. remember the story and it's mm-hmm. like, Oh, this is, this is a fun story. I love yeah. the thrill and the turn and the, yeah. you know, the chase and whatever. Like there are these things that you love mm-hmm. about the experience. But in this movie, I th- there are several, there are at least three in my head right now that I could easily 
go to and explain so of, of the image of yeah. like what it looked like. Yeah. And I can describe like that the image was striking to me. Mm-hmm. And in some way, I mean, I mean, so Roger Deakins would say he's done a horrible job because mm-hmm. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Roger Deakins is fond of saying that if you remember the cinematography, then I, I failed, you know, like I didn't serve the story well enough for you to like be so immersed in it. <laughs> Roger Deakins, we remember all of the friends. <laughs> Except I would challenge people to remember yeah. them yeah. because because he's not wrong. That like yeah. you can analyze the frames and they're technically perfect and just beautiful, but that there's not a whole lot that feels super iconic. Mm-hmm. Now I love the problem is I love iconic imagery and I think that yeah. that's a part of the whole thing in cinema. So mm-hmm. I, I I would yeah I would go to task with Roger Deakins about yeah. that one and say that the frames actually do matter and he yeah. is actually communicating a lot with his mm-hmm. frames and that kind of stuff but yeah but this one was deliberately artistic yeah even in, in the way. music whereas yeah. yeah I was I'm just I like the music a lot yeah audiophile like Michael Giacchino is like he's just on it he's everything he does like I, I particularly like the Batman theme that just blasts all the time great I walked out of there just doing that tune at everything because it's, every it's time just he got a, into his you know, car like, <laughs> opening the door um and then just the riddler theme though like i said the riddler theme wonderful the, the yeah. boom, 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 boom. it's kind of like uh got like a like the old 19 uh yeah 1989 batman like with like the very yes yeah. weird and 80s kind of mm-hmm. theme and it's got like this cartoony evil Ugh, yeah ness to it it was good oh, it was so good yeah so so really good technical yeah. part, technical achievement i think it's i think it's worth people watching like yeah. it really is i would go watch it again but i think definitely i will watch it again and i and i walked away from it like i i appreciated like so i think the message lar- i think largely they do, i think they did rely on dialogue in that last monologue for you to kind of go like wipe that over paint over the the movie with and to go back and go that's what this movie is about is this dialogue that he gives about the fact that vengeance vengeance wasn't what was solving the problem it was becoming a hero and inspiring hope that is going to except fix being the a city. hero and inspiring hope is yeah. a superman's job that's not batman well that's, that's, every, that's every hero's every hero's job like batman batman is the greatest detective but he's also a symbol of, of the city like everybody in the city knows who batman is like everybody like gets behind most everybody gets behind batman once he kind of gets gets his stride going like even in the dark night everyone's like everybody loved the batman the mayor loved yeah. batman even though he wasn't necessarily given credit for him but, like he was in these meetings he was getting yeah, these right. things going mm-hmm. so like everybody ap- appreciated him and he becomes a an integral part so like this is before this isn't this isn't the the Dark Knight Batman where he's like fully established. This is like almost between. This is the Batman, the weird teenage Batman between your Batman Begins and yeah. I would say that's an odd cop out. That's a cop out. It's not a hey, cop out. Yeah, it is. Saying saying hey, we're in a we're in an odd teenage phase of Batman. Sorry guys, you'll have to excuse the emo <laughs> Batman who's you know just kind of like I enjoyed the emo Batman though. No, I did too. I so yeah. that I enjoy. But I guess what I'm saying is that I don't think that that still we are all so much of what you're saying is pulling from other movies yeah. to explain why this one's good. Yeah. And if you have to pull from the dark Knight to explain why this movie is so good, all that does is say the dark Knight was amazing and that this <laughs> well, one the dark is, Knight is a piece amazing, of trash, but this is not <laughs> a piece of trash. I w- but see, the problem is, is that the story is the heartbeat of a movie. Yeah. And that if the, even if the image, like the imagery must serve the story. And I just don't think that it did that right. That I remember the imagery and it says something and suggests something about Batman Mm -hmm. that was not developed in the movie. What does it say about Batman? Well, so so, I mean like there's images that, that come yeah, like, so the the very end, Mm -hmm. the example, people can watch the trailer and see he's carrying a red flare through Mm -hmm. the waters of judgment, leading other people out. Right. So he himself having, been baptized mm-hmm. death and resurrection right like yeah he, so here here he's coming out of the waters and he's leading other people out of the waters importantly he's leaving the mayor out of the water who is mm-hmm. the one that he has shrugged off as bruce wayne he's not been helping out her mayor campaign mm-hmm. uh, he's not hopeful in her of being uncorrupt and he, he just doesn't even care yeah and now he's i mean you're kind of he, he didn't even really it wasn't like he they didn't seem to be in any serious threat but they seemed more scared of him than the waters at the yeah, moment. And yeah. Anyway, so aside from the the, the nitpicking on the imagery, he's mm-hmm. walking out and everyone's following him and he's got this flare. Mm-hmm. 
uh, and that kind of imagery is the kind of thing that can, can communicate so much mm-hmm. that if the whole movie had really developed a theme that that was paying off, mm-hmm. that would be really powerful imagery. Yeah. And it, it's imagery that when I import my own ideas to mm-hmm. is powerful imagery. Yeah. But it's not powerful imagery because the movie was powerful. Yeah. It's powerful imagery because I am bringing something to the movie. This is how I feel. We can get into another mm-hmm. disagreement perhaps yeah. on Boba Fett. The mm-hmm. book of Boba Fett I thought was just garbage yeah. I, at I, the end. I, at, so it was a, it was a fun show as, yeah. but it did, it did the same thing where it's like, Oh, you're a star Wars fan. Aren't you? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Let There's me like 10,000 characters everything. for you to look at and to go exactly. like, Oh, let's go. <laughs> right. Yeah. And so then people love it, mm-hmm. but they love it because they're bringing something to it and it's fan pandering. Yeah. And I didn't feel like this one was super fan pandering. No, 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 like, no, no. So yeah. I, I'm speaking specifically like of Boba, Boba Fett. Fett. Yeah. yeah, yeah the, the, you've got super pan fan which isn't bad if that's what you're trying to do. Yeah. But if you're trying to create something that stands on its own, on its own, Mm -hmm. then you can't do that. Yeah. Batman, I think relied on people to import, not necessarily fandom because Mm -hmm. I can see, I can import most of the things that people are trying to import. I'm trying to import myself, right? Mm -hmm. Like I'm trying to uh, import ideas I've got from the Batman, from Nolan, from, uh, yeah. the original Batman series. Like the, those are the things that I'm yeah. trying to import into this character. Yep. Uh, but that are just kind of ideals about justice ideals yeah. about morality. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of the superhero type, yeah. uh, dilemmas that people, that superheroes face, like mm-hmm. I'm importing those kind of things. And yeah. I don't know that they were already there as very strong. At yeah. least. I think they were relying on you importing a lot of it Yeah. in order to add to the strength of the, you know, dilemma. So I would be curious as to somebody watching this, who's never doesn't really know anything about Batman, but that would, that would be very fascinating. Who doesn't know anything about Batman? I know that's going to be a hard person to find. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Yeah. But But, uh, yeah, overall it's a movie worth watching. It's certainly, so like I said, at the beginning of the episode, this is a movie I've talked way more about mostly because me and Elijah disagree on it, but (laughs) to be fair, but uh, it has like even going out of the theater, it had me wondering about it. And in some ways, because mm-hmm. I was just like, what is it? What even is this movie? What's it trying yeah. to say? And I was trying to figure it out for myself. Mm-hmm. So none like, like it definitely gave the appearance of having, of trying to say something, mm-hmm. right? It definitely tried and the directors are skillful enough that uh, Reeves was able to really say something interesting or mm-hmm. like, it's like when you read a book that yeah. is just out of reach, right? Mm-hmm. Well, often it's like when you read the classic type book. Mm-hmm. that you've never read before and that it's your and first like, time. There's and so you much it. subtext and to you, this. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like the thing that you know is good mm-hmm. and, Oh, I just don't appreciate it yet because this is a classic and I'm mm-hmm. supposed to appreciate it. So if I don't appreciate it, it's probably my fault. Yeah. That's kind of how you feel walking out of Michael mm-hmm. Reeves is that, Hey, it's very sophisticated imagery, very yeah. sophisticated technical execution. And man, this must be way better than I think it is. Yeah. And I give a lot of thought to it. And then the more thought I give to it, I just cannot, walk away thinking that there is so much more there that I need to be doing, you know, that, yeah. I, that I'm missing. So that's th- that. Is, those are our thoughts on the Batman folks. So yeah. you must go watch it yourselves and then set us straight. There you and go. And explain to me what I'm missing in but this movie. Really 2.5. That's just where I'm stuck on a 2.5. 2. Uh, so, okay. Cause how, I, how do you, okay. Maybe this needs to be its own episode. Okay. But how, that's true. I was going to say, how do you, how do you rate a movie? So like, I would have to say at least half of those stars is frustrated because I couldn't give it five. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, okay. it's rage. It's yeah, rage. It's rating. rage. Rage that, rating. That's, that's what the like is for. So if you don't <laughs> like it, then don't like it. But some semi objectively, like what? Two and a half. Well, well, if there's no backbone to the movie, if there's no moral center or compass to the movie at all, then and it's one thing. So I haven't watched the Joker. I probably should. You need to. But uh, it, as I understand that movie, you've got a movie that's horribly corrupt in terms of the 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 moral center of the movie. But mm-hmm. it's demonstrating mm-hmm. the whole point is that it's morally corrupt. Yeah. Whereas Batman is not supposed to be. Hey, the whole point here is that Batman should not ever exist because he's because it's a piece of garbage. You know, like that's mm-hmm. so it should actually be saying something morally or have some kind of moral heart to it. And I just didn't see a moral heart. So if that, if the heart of the movie is gone, I don't see how I can give it. 
<sighs> Anything high. Oh, that's goodness. my, that's my goodness reason gracious. for reading it down there. So, but folks go, go watch it. Go watch see it. What you, see what you think. We might need a part two. to this episode. <laughs> 4.5. Maybe, maybe I'll one, drop it down. Maybe to 4. one 5. day, <laughs> maybe one day Elijah will help me bring it up to mm-hmm. five or whatever. You're not bringing it out of the 2.5. You have not convinced me. I'm leaving not it squarely you. in the 2.5. Gracious. Yep. I'm gonna I'm gonna leave that 2.5 <sighs> there. Now I will I will not change it until I watch it again. Until you watch it again. Yep. It's set in stone until then. But I when I go watch it again and I go to put put it back in my uh, letterbox log, I will reevaluate my rating at that point. <sighs> so, ladies and gentlemen. This has been Josh has won. <laughs> is what's happened. Josh is so happy, so quick to end the episode. <laughs> He's like, I win. I, episode, <laughs> episode's over. <laughs> cut, cut the microphone the now. <laughs> Play the music. Uh, uh, well, I don't know. My brain. I don't brain, know that we've settled. I don't know that we've, we've settled it's anything. Settled. We've not settled anything. But it is. But it's, have, it is true. I do. I do agree with you. It's one of those movies that you you sit there and you're like thinking about it for a while, and you're just trying to. Just yeah. chew through it. Yep, and we'll keep thinking about it even to the next times we watch it. Yeah. So it's it's a Tootsie Pop movie, trying to get to, trying <laughs> yeah, to get to exactly. the center, the chewy chocolatey center. Mm-hmm. Yep. One day maybe I will, and maybe it'll be sweet and glorious, or maybe it'll be as bitter as dirt. Who knows? I don't know, but we'll maybe see. Maybe I am just a sucker for good imagery. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm a sucker for that too. Uh, I'm I'm game. Well, I'm a sucker for good imagery. But I needed more. You needed, I needed more. more. I just needed more. <sighs> yeah, that was. I love. I do love the imagery of this one. Okay, it's so I, I think that the, I think Greg, Fra- Greg Frazier is like the digital version of. I mean, Roger Deakins does digital, but he is becoming the digital version of Roger Deakins. Yeah, he's 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 just so he's doing, done Dune. Doing uh, great. Yeah, Mandalorian. Mm-hmm. He's busting out some sweet stuff. He's killing it. Same yeah, thing with Michael Giacchino. These are like the next. This is like the next wave of some legit yeah. people. If like this just is get, like your yeah. Spielberg working with John Williams and just killing it. You know, one day we need to talk about that. Like who's the next Spielberg. And I don't, I just don't know that there is one. Yet. I think it, JJ Abrams is trying so hard. Oh, he's, he's trying not, he's so not. hard, but he's not, he is slamming his just because he's kind of like was made to like his protege kind of thing. But yeah, right. He's not, he's not doing it. For no, me. it's not going to, it's, he's not going to be it. I don't know. I don't know who it is. I mean, Spielberg is so stinking prolific though. Like he's got so much. He's got such a style. Yeah. I mean, I don't, you'd have to look at like who's, who is it somebody who's making movies like Spielberg or is it somebody? Who's, no, I don't think because the next, this, what makes Spiel, I mean, you can talk about Spielberg in terms of the movies. There's so made. many different kinds of movies, but I think though that like you have to talk about the good quality movies with a distinctive voice and the only way to know that is by having a lot of movies under your belt. Yeah. And I just don't know that there are many people. I mean, Matt Reeves doesn't, he doesn't have a lot of movies under his belt. So, and far. I just don't, this isn't, this also isn't that like the eighties era of Hollywood anymore. So yeah. we just don't have that kind of movie output. And I don't know. And you don't that, have that type of control anymore either. Yeah. Cause Spielberg, Coppola, All and the mo- Lucas, yeah. they would just start making movies and then go, Hey, production company, we're making a movie. And they go, what? you're making a movie right now. Like literally like I, I listen yeah. to a round table and they're like, you're making a movie and all the, in all the movies now that are big enough that usually come across your screen are, are the kind of movies that, uh, so many hands in the pie. Exactly. Yeah. And you so, can't point to one person. Right. Yep. Well, this has been good. It's been this good. has been a good hearty talk about the Batman. Yeah. The all talk, right. which will continue. I'm sure. And time to future. ambush Josh at church. <laughs> or ambush me it kind of felt like a it felt like a an am, like i ambushed i ambushed some people at church people that you went and saw the movie with yep. and uh it turned into a reverse ambush and i re- i didn't realize what i was walking into <laughs> didn't realize that there's some claymore set and i was like oh, yeah crap. although i think you've i think though you might have turned more minds than mine i think so uh, yeah i don't know i think a lot of people a lot of people are wooed and i know that i'm a sucker for all the production above story sometimes yeah so i don't know i'll chew on it we'll come back to this <laughs> we will i'm not done with this let's let's leave this on the table anyway, folks this has gone long long enough so this will uh <laughs> this will be, be the conversation that keeps happening again and again and again, and again, and again. Until you get so bored of it yeah, like, just like goodness, uh, just josh it, needs to watch braveheart and that's another discussion that needs to continue it does need to continue yeah 
Someday I will watch it. Every episode until you watch it. <laughs> I will return. <laughs> it's like uh, the Green the Knight returning. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, anyway. Cool. Well, this has been another episode. Thank you all for listening. Uh, as always, you can send the recommendations to us at podcast at foxfirefarmhouse.com mm. and uh, check out our some of our movie recommendations on the website, foxfirefarmhouse.com. Oh, yeah. And uh, until next time, peace. Bye.